Before I show you all of the notions that we're going to need for our applique project, I wanted to show you some collar options that I've put together. So in this one, I would use this for the bigger flower circle, this one for the smaller circle, and this for the leaves. I think it's a very pretty combo. And this one, again, the bigger flower, and then the smaller flower, and then the leaves. And this one, the bigger flower, oops, the smaller flower, and then the leaves, and this one, bigger flower, smaller circle, and then the leaves. So what you're going to need are your fabrics, of course. We're also going to need two pair of scissors. You're gonna need one for your fabric and one for paper so you can cut out your template. You're also going to need a water soluble marker. I really like this one, Mark Be Gone. It works really well and it has a nice tip on it and they last quite a while. You're also going to need some applique sharps. I'm using size nine and I like them quite well. And of course you will need your template pieces. And last but not least, it is super important to have all of the thread options that you can. So here I have some just regular um, sewing weight. Here I have some 12 weight. I did both and I didn't hate the 12 weight. I loved working with it, but this regular quilting weight definitely melted into the fabric more and it gave it a much better look. So although this is a lot more fun to work with and easier, this is probably the route you'll want to go. The difference in the color of the spools is the um, the creamy color is polyester and this golden yellow color is 100% cotton. So I prefer the cotton, but they both work fine and I will be using both um, for whatever matches the fabric. So I am going to get my fabric cut as per the pattern and get the templates cut out and then we will be back here. So I have my circles cut out and my leaf pieces cut out and what I'm going to do now is trace my template on the wrong side of the pieces as um, described in the directions. So you take your water soluble pen and mark around And the most important part of this is probably making sure that you cut your template out as good as possible and are tracing as perfect as possible because this will be your line to make that really crisp edge. And so now we have our piece drawn on and I have done the other pieces already. <clears throat> So now what we will do is put our template pieces aside. So you will place right sides together like this. And you can put a pin in the center if you want. And then again with this. And I might put a couple pins in this to help hold it. And then the same with your leaf pieces. You will put those right sides together and you can put a pin in. I usually don't put a pin in for these because they're so tiny, but if you want, you can put a pin in for those. And what you're going to do is sew 
right directly on this line all around. And the same for the circles, so directly on the line all the way around your circle. And what you will end up with is this. So you can see right sides together, I have sewn on that line and now it's time to trim it. So I'm gonna show you on the leaf because on the circle, it's very easy. You're just gonna trim about a quarter of an inch away all around and that's it. On the leaf, to help take some bulk away, I like to cut as close to the points as possible without getting the stitches. And then for the sides, cut about a quarter of an inch away. And this doesn't need to be perfect, a perfect quarter inch. And so now you have your piece, cut these threads off. Now you have your little leaf piece. And so you will do this exact step with all of the pieces, but I will show you what comes next. So we have our leaf, we see wrong sides, and what you're gonna wanna do is separate it. So you can see that I have both pieces separated and I'm going to take a small cut into one side. I'm only cutting through this, we'll call it the back side. And you'll stick your scissors in there and you'll cut a slit like that. Not going all the way to the edge, but enough to turn it inside out. And I had to grab my tool. This is a tool that, um, I think it came in one of my daughter's paint kits or something. And I kind of sanded the edge down because it was sharp. So you'll want something that's not very sharp. Even like a dull pencil would work, but we're going to turn this inside out. So it's kind of finicky on these pieces. It's much easier on the circle, which is why I'm showing you with this piece, but you'll want to I'll separate the pieces again. And then I kind of stick it in there and put my finger on the outside and then just kind of flip it. And it's very finicky. The leaves will take you a bit of time. Try to be as gentle as possible. Now I've used the same fabric on both sides of my leaves. I have tried it a couple different, or on all of them actually, not just the leaves, but I've tried a couple different ways. I've tried using just a white fabric on the back, and I've also tried using featherweight fusible interfacing on the back, and the interfacing definitely made it um, thin. Um, it was a lot um, less three-dimensional on the fabric, although still very much three-dimensional, but it made a flatter look. However, I found that the leaves were impossible. I could not do the leaves with the interfacing because the pieces were so tiny and the interfacing kept tearing. And the circles I did with the interfacing, but in some places I couldn't get the interfacing to fold up under. And so on the edge, you can see a little bit of the interfacing. So to remedy that, I tried using the same fabric on both sides. That way, if it rolls up a little bit, it doesn't matter because it's the same fabric. So you do it however you want to. If you even want to do needle turn where you just literally take a raw edge of fabric and as you're appliquing, you just kind of use your needle to like tuck it up under and then you stitch and then you kind of tuck it up under and you stitch and so on. Um, so you do your applique however you want to. This is how I was able to get really nice crisp edges and it was fun and easy for me. And um, so this is your leaf and in a little bit, we will take it over and press it. But for now, this is what it looks like. Sometimes I will take this tool and run it 
along the seam gently just to kind of get all of the excess out. Poke your points out. Oops. And there it is, your perfect little leaf. So you'll do that to all your pieces. I'm going to go and sew all of these pieces and get them um, flipped inside out and then we will move on. Now for the circle, you'll do the same thing as this, but you'll cut a tiny X into it and flip it. And on the circle is really where you'll want to take your tool and just kind of work along the edges to smooth everything out. But I promise the circles are much easier than trying to turn this tiny piece inside out. And it really wasn't that hard. So just take your time and I will be back so we can press our pieces. Okay, so I have all of my leaf pieces and my smaller circle done. And I wanted to um, go ahead and show you on the bigger circle how to turn it since I haven't done it yet. So again, just like the leaf, just make a tiny little snip after separating the fabric on just one side. And then you just make an X. So on the leaf, we just made like a slit, but this one, I like to make an X. And with this one is when your tool really comes in handy to help get those smoothed edges. So you will just slowly and carefully turn it right side out. And you can kind of run your finger along just to help get the edges started. Okay, so there's your circle. And then I like to take the tool inside. And so this is the top of your circle and this is the bottom. So when you're putting your tool in, you want to have it on this side of that seam to kind of help roll the top over the bottom a little. And you can see like right here, my marker is showing, but it's water soluble. So after we're all done, we can just spray it with a little water and it will disappear. And just gently run. You don't want to poke your stitches. That's why having a doll tool is really helpful. And there is our bigger circle and our little circle and all of our leaves. So I wanted to bring my ironing mat over here and I'm using my small Aliso iron that's perfect for these tiny pieces. So I will show you one leaf and one circle. So we'll do the circle we just did. And I have found my best way is to lay it down on your ironing board as perfect as possible. So my seam is kind of rolled up under it. It's very flat. And I will take a little of this best press and just give it a couple quick sprays. Let that set for a second. This really helps it hold its shape nicely while you are appliquing it. And then as you're working with it, it definitely softens it up a little bit too. And then just press. And now we have a super duper flat, crisp piece. And I'll show you on the leaves because they are very round, as you can see. So again, lay it on your mat. I already pressed or um, wiggled my tool in there to help the seam roll. So just try to get it to stay with that seam rolled under. A couple quick sprays. Let it soak for a second and then put your iron on it.
and a before and after. So you will do that to all of your pieces and then we will attach it to, or all attach all the pieces to our background. I have all of my applique pieces ready and I have my backing here with a center line pressed. And the first thing we're going to do is add the stem. So what I like to do is lay it down and then fold half of it back. And then you're going to take the glue and just put little dots and then flip it back and then just set the iron on it to help it dry. And then we'll flip it back the other way and do the other side. And all of the placement directions are in the pattern. Next, we'll do our big, and you can see this is it's on there. So next, we'll do our big circle. And again, I just kind of fold half over, oops, and dot around. And the good thing about Elmer's glue is it will just wash out when you wash the bag. And then we'll come in and do this half. And it really doesn't take a lot. Sometimes more comes out than intended. I forgot to close it one day, so we had to cut the tip a little bigger because it started getting clogged up and we couldn't fix it. Okay. So the circle is on there. Woo. So now the smaller circle. Go lay it like that. bottom and for the leaves we want to put three leaves on either side of our flower and we just want to space them evenly I didn't put a placement on those um, but just wherever you like you could do them like very upwards you could have them more out just however you like it I try to just space them evenly I think that looks pretty good. So again, the same thing. Just a little bit of glue. I'm going to go ahead and base the rest of the leaves on and then we will come back to start the applique process. 
Now all of your pieces should be basted onto your background and they aren't going anywhere. So it's time for the fun part. We need to pick out a thread and I'm going to start on the stem and then hop to the leaves, big circle, then little circle. So I want to pick out a thread that matches my green and this one is pretty darn close. So we will go with that one. So I'm going to get you in close and personal for this. I have my applique needle. Maybe I'll pull you out a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to pull a length of thread. and thread my needle. And then I'm going to tie a knot. So whenever I tie my knot, it's harder to see with this thin thread, I take my needles pointing up and my thread is pointing down and I wrap it seven, eight. I'm going to try eight times because this is really thin thread and I want a big knot like that. And what I have been doing just to make sure that nothing comes undone is you can see my stem outline. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to make another little stitch, just kind of lock everything in place because I don't want all of my hard work to go away. And then we will start. So I have my thimble on and we are going to start over here on this side. So the object is to come up from your through your fabric and you want to catch Oh, here, just the edge of your applique piece. It's so hard to do this through a camera. So, okay. So you're coming up from your backing or your background and into this applique piece, just taking a little bite of the fabric. And then you're going to pull through. You are then going to go straight down where you came out and then back up a little ways away and up through the fabric. I'm gonna peek at it really quick because it's really hard to see through the camera how big of a bite I'm taking. Okay, so you go a little bit, boop, and oh my goodness, you can't see the stitch because the thread matches. It's magical. Okay, so again, you're going to go straight down through the backing and then come up a little ways and there you go. And you're just going to keep doing that all around your pieces. and securing them in place. And you virtually can't see the stitches because they match so well.